and I want to talk about AI and chat GPT, and I think I can comfortably do that. So this is um, this is great. This is, this is my most information dense 60 minutes I've ever done in my lifetime. Um, there's, there's a lot of hype around AI and chat GPT. Everybody's an expert. Everybody's talking about AI this. It, it is so difficult to separate the signal from the noise in this space right now. So my first bit of advice is to take everything with a healthy bit of skepticism. Um, it's tough. But what is the impact? What are we seeing in this space? I've used a couple of Gary Keller quotes in my past presentations, and I'm going to start out with another Gary Keller quote talking about chat GPT. This was from February. Will it actually change the very nature of search? I don't think so. Here's some screenshots of other things. So chat GPT in general, Google shares drop a hundred billion after its new AI chatbot makes a mistake. This is Google search involving chat GPT with, with, um, what is it called? Bard integrated into it. It's it's a chatbot integrated into Google search. Um, this is Bing search, right? Where it's fully integrated into search. So these are some, you know, literal examples of chat GPT and generative AI literally changing how search works. Like not just real estate search, but search in general. I mean, if you if you have not been living in a cave the past six months, you will have seen that. It's like an arms race between Google and OpenAI and Microsoft, Bing, everybody's getting in this game. Like it and it, it is focused around search. So I'm not saying Gary's wrong, but what I'm what I'm saying is, or what I'm asking is, what if he's wrong? Right? And can any of us really afford to be wrong in this space right now? If we go back, gosh, almost 20 years at this point, you know, there was another company that that changed real estate search, right? It's Zillow. Imagine if you could go back 20 years and say, yeah, actually, Zillow is going to change the way people search for homes. They're, they're not going to call up a real estate agent and say, hey, show me around. They're going to do it on their own. What if, what if you knew that back then? You probably would have made some different decisions along the way, whether you're an agent, a broker, a, a tech entrepreneur, wh whatever it is. So that's that's kind of where we're at right now. I think it needs to be eyes wide open looking at this stuff and and saying, you know, it, it's not black or white. Like, yes, it's going to change it. No, it's not. But you, you got to hedge your bets. You can't nobody can afford to be wrong in this space. And we're at the same kind of moment that we saw 20 years ago with Zillow coming on the scene. Now, the way I'm thinking about this is is actually in two phases. So the first phase of what's happening in AI and chat GPT, it's happening right now. And it's kind of the really easy, basic proof of concept stuff. Um, people are generally just kind of wrapping chat GPT with, with a different skin, another layer, or they're integrating into it somehow, or they're they're doing a plugin like, um, like Zillow announced. And actually that's, so yeah, yesterday Zillow announced a, a chat GPT plugin. Um, it's pretty basic, you know, and for the Zillow people on the call, I, I apologize, but I mean, it's not, it's not exciting. Uh, it, it's, it's taking the core functionality of how somebody searches on Zillow and just making it a chat bot. And, and it's an alpha and I get it. And, you know, now it was released the day before Zillow's earnings. So they're going to talk about it and it's going to be really cool and exciting for investors. And, and it is, there is cool and exciting stuff to come out of this space. But what this is right now is not super exciting. And it's basically just taking what you can already do on Zillow right now, like doing a search, but making it conversational with a chat bot. I, I don't know. I don't know how many people that applies to, right? How, how many people are appealing to, but it's a start, right? And that's the important part. The next phase is where things get interesting. And that's where companies are going to be putting generative AI built on unique data sets. Right? It's not about the chat bot. It's about the power that, that the chat bot or uh, chat GPT can have on top of a really big data set, um, taking something that is very hard for humans to do and making it happen like that, like really simple. That's what gets me excited. And, and that's, you know, we're probably months away from that, but it is coming soon. And actually just this morning, uh, Real, the Real Brokerage, who I talked about earlier, they announced this, uh, an AI-powered digital personal concierge, they need to tighten this up a bit, uh, to provide agents with immediate access to information. And this bot is going to draw from Reels' proprietary platform, right? There's the proprietary unique data set. 
to provide real-time personalized support. So the way I read this is this isn't in targeting consumers. This is targeting agents. And it's tied in, if you read the press release, it's tied into their big transaction management system that they own. That's a unique data set. That's interesting, right? Giving agents a, a superpower, helping agents do their job better, faster. That's where things get interesting. So, and if we think about the search thing, I'll give you a kind of couple examples that I think about. You know, we're not there yet, but this is where I want to be. And hopefully this expands your brains into thinking about how this could reinvent the way people search for homes. So imagine three queries. Here's one. Um, show me all the three bedroom homes for sale in Boulder that are walking distance to a coffee shop. That would take me a long time to do that as a human. You got to figure out the coffee shops, figure out the good ones, see what's for sale. That's two different web browser windows, right? Or a real estate agent, how they might know that in, intuitively, but you're not, you might miss something. This is something that generative AI can figure out like that, right? A couple data sets, suck it in, spit it out. How about this? Show me all the three or four bedroom homes. I need an office space for sale in Boulder where I can walk my kids to school. Oh, and uh, granite countertops too. You know, if you think about Zillow's unique data set here, where they're doing kind of AI and machine learning on, on photos to understand this stuff. Um, same thing, generative AI, you know, five seconds, be able to spit this stuff out. You can't do this right now. I, I don't, I don't think I could possibly conduct this search on Zillow. Um, or how about this? Show me homes for sale in 80304 that are 20% below the median price of the neighborhood and that haven't sold in the past five years. I don't know how the heck you would get that right now. That That's a lot of data. But if you think about Zillow's unique data set, they've got it, right? Five seconds, you get this. And maybe you fi uh, find that really cool bargain, you know, for a home that hasn't come to market in a while and is and is the, um, you know, the ugly bunch in a neighborhood. So that's what gets me excited about search. And we think about the funnel, right? You know, home search is up at the top, the transactions all the way at the bottom. A lot of this stuff is around home search. Uh, in, in the same way, I mean, think, you know, if, if I think about, if I ask you rhetorically, what is the killer app that Zillow had that gave it this dominance at the top of the funnel when it launched? You should all, if you've taken, <laughs> I don't think any of my students are on here, but if you were a student of mine, you'd say Zestimate, right? It was a Zestimate. That was this killer app for people to do that. And iBind did the same thing. These were these really cool top of the funnel things to get consumers kind of starting their home search, starting their journey. And that's the key message out of this. It's top of the friggin' funnel. If you think about targeting consumers and, and looking for search, it's a top of the funnel play, just like Zestimate. You know, it's, it's Zestimate 20 years later. It's a new, interesting tool for consumers to use to get interested in buying and selling homes. So if, we, if I think about the application of AI, um, it's for consumers is gonna be the home search. Right, that's where they're targeted. And anything below that, though, closer to the transaction, I, I believe agents, like we saw with that real announcement, that's where things get more interesting. I, I don't, I, I can't visualize, and I could be totally wrong, but how does generative AI and Chat GPT help me buy a home? Like, yeah, I can ask it questions around floodplains and financing, but at that point, my guess, based on all the evidence and data we've seen and disruption in the space. So far, my guess is that somebody's still going to want to talk to a human being there. So I, I think the real power is, well, how do we give agents a superpower? You know, like, hey, Leo, um, you know, uh, give me a purchase agreement for Mike Del Pretty for 123 Main Street. Um, da, 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 da. I, I, I don't know, just something something where the, we're giving it to agents and maybe not consumers. Consumers is more home search, top of the funnel. At the end of the day, and this is where I redeem myself with the Zillow folks on the call, um, Zillow wins. <laughs> Uh, you know, this is not the kind of thing where a scrappy startup in some garage, you know, launches this great AI chatbot tool and, and wins. This is all based on heavy duty computational firepower, finances, engineering team sizes. Like this is hard stuff to do, um, but perhaps most importantly, unique data sets. And, and I, I just can't imagine a scenario where Zillow doesn't win. They don't have to be first. They can be second, third, fourth, fifth. But at the end of the day, I, I would kind of put my money on Zillow being able to execute and, and win in that space because of the data that they have. It's such a huge advantage. Um, they've got a lot. And if you think about how this plays out for Zillow, imagine that chat GPT interaction where you're doing these searches I talked about. 
And then the last thing that you hear is this, you know, from the chatbot. I hope I've answered all of your questions. Are you ready to speak to a local real estate agent now? And that's, I mean, this is Zestimate. This is top of the funnel. This is premier agent revenue, right? If somebody, if a consumer is interacting with Zillow and doing those searches and they they get this, that's that's the lead in. And then guess what? Zillow is able to monetize a lead in the same way they've been able to monetize leads for years and years. And that's the premier agent revenue. Oof.